So we're going to use this gram scale here and we're going to weigh up these cans so you can see how much each can weighs. If we multiply this out, every thousand cans or so is going to make uh, kilogram quantities. So you multiply by base 10, you get a thousand cans times 14 grams is 14,000 grams or about 14 kilograms. I'll drop those cans in this bag like this, set up an empty bag, plug in the foot pedal like this. We're going to screw the air dryer back together like that. We're going to plug in the air dryer to the hose like this. And we're going to plug the air dryer into the air compressor like this. We're going to turn the power on the extension cord. Then come over here and flip the power to the compressor on. There it goes. Now we're going to crush cans. The rest of this clip is can crushing from different angles, handheld and so forth. I included a long clip at the very end of the video, which was just shot with the tripod and my phone mounted on the rack here. These are concentrated clips that I shot each time I crushed a can, and they're an art thing. So go ahead and enjoy the rest of this segment without me talking much. Here we see that we are working on our way through that. With that. We're going to crush that one again. Just like that. That's all of them. Here we're setting up the camera to look down at the unit. It's being held on by the tripod. There we go. We'll see that as we fire the unit, it actually oscillates a little bit. This is kind of cool. You can see the real-time speed, too. You can see the bag move when the can falls. It's kind of fun. I'm wearing hearing protection. Meg used her Apple Watch Series 5 in its sound registering mode to detect that the noise emitted near the crushing end of the cans here is around 100 decibels. Or repeatedly exposing your ears to that level of sound can actually cause hearing damage, so wear hearing protection when you're doing an activity like this. These bubbly cans were courtesy of our friend Olga. She saves up her cans for us. We have several other sources of cans. If it was just Meg and I, I would never generate enough aluminum to justify running smelting batches in my 10 pound propane forge, furnace, smelter, whatever you want to call it. But because we have several different sources of cans coming in, we're generating grocery bag quantities of them and then I smash them, achieving somewhere between a 5 and 10 to 1 compression. We see that not all of these bubbly cans were completely empty of fluid and liquid drips out. Invariably, pop cans, soda cans, beer cans, tonic water cans, Red Bull, whatever, unless the person actually sucks the residual liquid out of the can by inverting the can and deliberately sucking it out, there's always going to be a little residual fluid. If the cans are air dried at high enough temperature long enough, most of the water in the fluid will evaporate, leaving sugars behind. Soda cans and these cans that had residual sugars in them, they actually smell like candy making when I throw them in my crucible in the propane forge when it's hot to liquefy them. The resulting alloy is a low percentage of magnesium because of the can lids. Can lids are magnalium or magnesium aluminum alloy. Uh, they cost more than the rest of the body of the can. They alloy the magnesium with the aluminum to make the lid much stronger, and it has to be that way so that the tab can rip the can open when you bend it with your finger to do that. At any rate, most of the 14 grams is the body. We're going to zoom in. I thought that might be an interesting view. Top down at an angle. There you go. You can see that the pace is roughly one every five to seven seconds. 